Welcome to iLecture Online. Now that we've seen the conceptual approach to the principle of least action and we've seen some examples of how that principle can be utilized in order to solve some interesting mechanical problems and we'll show you some more examples later, let's now try to derive mathematically the principle of least action. So it all centers around this equation or at least what we could call the integral that represents the action. And of course, we want that action to be a minimum. And so we take the integral over time of the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy along a particular path taken by a particle. And that path will be such, of course, that path must be in what we call a, um, a conservative field, a conservative force field, like a gravitational field. And then wherever the path is that is taken, we know that this integral will be a minimum. So how do we show that mathematically? In order to show that, what we're going to do here is take a look at this graph, and this graph represents what we'd call what's inside the integral, what we call the Lagrangian, as a function of x. But it can be a general function. Whenever we have a general function, we know that wherever the function is a minimum, the slope of that function, or the integral of that function, not the integral, the derivative of that function, will be equal to zero. So what we're going to do here is represents this general function as L, the Lagrangian, which is the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy, which we write here as a function of x. And then when L is a minimum, the slope will be equal to zero. Now notice the slope is not equal to zero there, but will be equal to zero over here. Now in general, the slope, of course, is a change in the vertical axis divided by the change in the horizontal axis. In this case, it would be delta L over delta x. If we now solve that for delta L, that is equal to the slope times delta x, and of course the slope can be written as the derivative of the function dL dx times that small change in x. And then in general, of course, if L is some function of x, which we've made it here, then we can write the change in the function as being equal to the derivative function times delta x. So that's kind of like the general approach we want to take. So where do we go from there? Well, if there's more than one variable, of course, that will now be written as follows. So we can probably have potentially three variables in space, and then we'd have three of these terms. So it would simply be the sum of the derivative in each direction times the change in that direction. Now, generally, the function is in a quadratic format. For example, the kinetic energy being equal to 1 half mv squared. So we could say that the function can, in general, then be the, be uh, expressed in terms of f equals x squared, and if we take the derivative, that is equal to 2x. Now, what we can say then is that if we have a function and we have a small change in the function, now the whole idea is that that change in the function, if we're at a minimum, doesn't really represent a change in the function. In other words, we can have a small change in x, which will now not cause a significant change in the vertical direction. So that's how we know we're going to be at a minimum, and that's the concept, how we prove mathematically the principle of least action. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a small change in the function in the vertical axis, and of course that's caused by a small change in x. Now if we square this, we get x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared, and that's equal to the original function plus a small change in the function. Of course, you can see here, since this is a quadratic equation, that 2x really represents the slope. So this is x squared plus the slope times delta x plus delta x squared. And of course, the slope can be written as the derivative of the function with respect to x. But now we realize, of course, that if we are at a minimum, then this term right here will go to zero because the slope is equal to zero, so the slope times delta x gives you no change in the function, and that's the idea. We're going to try to find a point where this term will go to zero. Now, we still have the delta x squared term, but remember, as delta x becomes really small as we go to the limit, delta x squared is so insignificantly small that we can simply drop that out. So what we're going to do as we continue is we're going to ignore these terms. So we want to find the point where the function is the minimum so that we have a small change in f. That's essentially, well, there's really no change in f when we make a small change in x. And so that's the point that we're trying to find. And take a look over here. So we can see here that the delta f here is represented by the zero plus the delta x squared. And so essentially it becomes the delta x squared 
but that's actually zero as delta x approaches zero because any number that's really, really tiny and we squared, of course, you get a very tiny number. And so we can, we can ignore the delta x squared terms in our derivation that's to come. So that's the whole concept. We're trying to find the principle of least action by realizing that the integrand represented by L, or in this case by any general function, we know that when the function reaches the minimum, if we make any small change in x, it will cause no change in y. In this case, if we make any small change in x, we'll have a, we have no change in the Lagrangian, and that's how we know we're at the minimum of the Lagrangian. And that's the approach we're going to take to find the principle of least action by finding where the function doesn't change, we make a small change in x. And that is how it's done.